Hey everyone. Hi. It's another week at UHC Streaming. Um, last week we did a, our first stream with you, but we're glad to come back to you this Thursday around 6.30. We know we're a little late, but it's fine. We had some uh, problems show up, but we're thankfully to get this on stream. And after this is recorded, we'll post it to more of our platforms. Right now it's just on the website. So how are you doing? Me? I'm okay. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Well, today we're going to be talking about false peace. And I'm Abraham, if you haven't met me before. And I'm Melissa. And we are the UHC leaders. And we're here to give you another update on what we're learning this week in our fellowship. So this week we learned about false peace and some pretty amazing things and I, I was just glad to be able to give my um, um what have i what i learned from god this week and then hear from my brothers and sisters on their perspectives and just iron sharpens iron so it's pretty yeah. amazing yeah um it's really interesting because initially when we thought of the topic false peace i personally kind of thought in light of the times that we're going through right now and when I started studying and just praying about it, the Father took me back way to the beginning, um, to Genesis 3, verse 7. And it says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And I thought this was really interesting because I believe this is the first place in Scripture where we see false peace initiated. As we know, Messiah came to bring reconciliation and peace between man and God, Elohim, Abba. And here, Adam and Eve, because they fell into sin, they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they separated themselves from the presence of the Father. And here they were, so scared and naked, they didn't know what to do. So they took matters into their own hands, like many of us do. They leaned on their own understanding and decided to grab fig leaves and start clothing themselves instead of and in place of the Father's glory, which had been their covering. And so here they are getting these fig leaves and sewing it together. And, and I think so many times we may feel like we're not good enough in the Father's presence or we just, you know, are trying to think of ways that we can do better or look better or just do things more for him. And we come up with this checklist of ideas that we're trying to target so we can feel right in our own standing, which is our self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. And that's a false sense of peace because we have to let that go and give up our own understanding, give up our ways, give up our ideas of how we think we are to present ourselves to him and just humble ourselves and just come to him as we are so we can have true peace and allow him to see us for who we are and accept us in our vulnerability and humility. Mm -hmm. so, That's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got something similar. Um, to me, false peace is anything that's not um, the true Messiah and the true spirit of Messiah. Yeah. And I think one way we can guard ourselves from falling into false peace or even false trust. There's a lot of people who think they're trusting in God by reading scripture, but really they're trusting who they think God is according to their understanding of scripture. So we think about the Pharisees um, and we think about how they read scripture and how they um, grab a hold of Torah very closely. And they sure did add a lot of stuff but what we have to ask ourselves is what exactly did they add well they added a lot of their un understanding of scripture which is vain to do so you know when we read scripture we need to remember that we ask the spirit to reveal it to us because it is a living word and sometimes it has deeper meanings in fact most of the time it has deeper meanings which Jesus came to show us and he deepened the meaning to many scriptures and the Pharisees 
a lot of the times didn't see it coming. So we can't put our hand on the Spirit. The Spirit is very um, glorious and God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and God works through His Spirit. So that is how we have a relationship with Him really is through His Spirit, His Ruach HaKodesh. And to be closer to Him is to be further away from our own understanding and to be further away from sin and to be further away from death. Okay. To be closer to our own understanding and, you know, make, put God in a box, I suppose, you know. Everyone's guilty of this. Many churches do it. Um, they fall into religion. But since this is about the God of peace, I did want to read this part of scripture with you. We read Philippians 3, chapter 3. If you want to go back and read this, if you weren't able to be a part of um, the message we heard in fellowship, or if you would like to just take a good look at it, because I encourage you to um, continue to read scripture and ask the Spirit to reveal it to you on what exactly it means, not on what any man um, says it means or created a doctrine to say it means. Ask the Spirit what it means. <clears throat> so in Philippians 3, um, it talks about Paul's conversion from the Old Testament to the renewed covenant and how he um, thinks differently now and how it was a transforming process and how Jesus revealed it to him. Um, otherwise, he would have never um, learned all these things. You know, some people might think that Paul learned from the Torah and that's why he was able to teach people in the new renewed <clears throat> covenant. But that's not the case. Paul had a huge testimony of actually doing a lot of zealous things under the law. In fact, he, um, he was uh, guilty of killing Christians, people that believed in Christ, before he was converted. And Christ obviously um, went and intervened by knocking him off of a donkey, blinding him, revealing himself to him, and continuing to uh, miraculously and divinely only by the spirit transform him into this new creation that we hear about in the new testament um so starting in chapter four um of philippians it starts paul starts to encourage us to be united and joyful and in prayer and he does that because he knows how our differences in how we think can divide us very easily. But the true peace is the peace of the Spirit. And if we are in Christ, that is what unites us. So Christ coming unites us and does not divide us. And in verse 7 of chapter 4, um, he says that the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and in the Strong's, it um, further explains it to be guard your desires, guard your affections, and guard your minds and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. So true peace is from Christ Jesus, the provided sacrifice, God's hand coming to the earth when we could not create our own righteousness. We could not create our own salvation, you know, but he ultimately had a plan the whole time to send and to provide for us. And it's actually cool because we, when we start talking about the law and the Torah and the Old Testament, um, it's basically prophesying about Christ. And if people were to read it in spirit and in, in truth, they would have saw Jesus coming from a mile of way. But some people relied on their own understanding and didn't even see Jesus when they were right in front of him talking to them. So that's what I wanted to share today. And with everything going on in the world, like Melissa said, <clears throat> we have to remember to stay in his presence and stay in his spirit and read his word and meditate on these things like Paul says in chapter 4 to dwell on the good things 
and dwell on the just things. And who is just and who is good? And that's only God. So when we spend time in his presence, we tend to find the real peace so that later we can spot out the counterfeit peace. Yeah. No, I mean, that's true. Like, um, Messiah is our rock, and that's who we're supposed to stand on. And he is our peace, and that is the only place we can find peace. And I liken it sometimes to a tornado. You can be in the eye of a storm, and everything is spinning around you, but if you keep your eyes focused up, there's clear skies ahead. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's like having a relationship in this crazy world that we're living in. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I don't know how anyone could even want to live without the Holy Spirit anyways. He is mm -hmm. the one that Jesus sent after he left, which gave us power to declare his word and declare the kingdom and to walk out the very path that God has predestined for us to walk out. You know, in fact, Peter, before he was filled with the Spirit and before Christ died and resurrected, said, I won't deny you Christ because he loved Christ, you know, in his own strength, of course, which is why he ended up denying him three times. Yeah. But after Christ's resurrection, he had the Holy Spirit. And at what lengths would Peter go after he had the Holy Spirit? He would go all the way to death. So yeah. it's very powerful. And there's no way in a million years I would want to live out this faith without the Holy Spirit. And it's only by faith that, what am I thinking of? That we can please God. It's only by faith that we can please God. Yeah. And it's only by faith that we attain righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. And the power of the Holy Spirit, which gives us the faith that the Father has provided good things for us to do. And mm -hmm. so in our obedience, through the strength of the Holy Spirit, we're even able to do those things. We can't do them in our own strength at all. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching today. Um, we're glad to get back to you. And we can't wait to hear about your comments and questions in email form. Or you can uh, um, leave it in the comments if it's on YouTube or whatever. So yeah. thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye.